So today we're going to do a bit of a recap of everything that we've covered from this week. Remember, it's always really important when you learn something, it's really good. You've had a learning experience. You've got to do that thing again for it to kind of be able to stick in your long term memory. So we're going to revisit all the things that we've looked at so far. And then we're going to have a look at what I'm calling changing graphs, like a before and after graph for you to do some more interpreting. So lots more deep thinking and we're going to get right into it. Well, to start off with, we're going to have a look at some of the, at the graph examples that we've seen. I have seen the most amazing examples come through. Now, a slight apology. I actually wanted to share more of them, and I've had some problems with the media player on my computer today, which has been really frustrating. But a bit of a shout out to, um, to Maya, Johanna, Oliver, Thomas, Dylan, Imogen, lots of other people as well. I've had some unbelievable videos sent through, so thank you so much for some of them. We're going to have a look at Izzy's in a moment. Um, and again, apologies that we've not been able to see more, but thank you so much for the examples that you sent through. I also have to show this. Oliver, you made me laugh here um, because Oliver also did a graph of the economy of Britain. There was a little downturn in about 2008. Oh dear. Um, and Oliver is predicting there's going to be a bit more around about now. But Oliver, you made me laugh, which is great. So uh, thanks for that. Now, I thought we'll start off with this little warm up at, at the graph. Fear in facial expression on a roller coaster ride. Uh, pause the video, 20 seconds. See if you can act that graph. And of course, what we have is these two, the scary bit, and then this extra scary bit here. Um, now, we're going to go and have a look at one of the examples that was sent through from Izzy. Um, and I'm going to show you my picture of her graph later on. Um, and she, she's going to play, uh, she's playing a musical instrument. And it's like an African drum, I think it was, in the message that, that Izzy sent me. And th there are different numbers of beats per second. So the, the speed of the beats uh, increases and decreases. Um, so I'm going to show you my graph later. Now what I want you to do is watch the video and you might need to re-watch it. See if you can complete the graph for the number of beats in each second, how quickly those beats are. So let's have a look at that video now. Well, here was my graph. Um, I, I thought that Izzy, to start off with, there were a few seconds where there weren't any beats. Um, so we only start then, and then it was quite slow, and there's a bit of a dip. Then we had a bit of an increase in the middle, and then another little dip, and then it went much higher for the last few seconds, and then ever so slightly slower before we finished. Um, so that was my graph. I wonder what yours looked like. And again, thank you so much to Izzy and to everyone else who sent those absolutely brilliant videos through. Um, well, today uh, the title is Changing Graphs. We're going to do a bit of a recap on some of the different graph types we've looked at already, so you can really strengthen your understanding there. And then we're going to have a look at graphs where we see a before and an after. Okay, so here, here's recap number one. So this graph shows the speeds of Nada and Amy in the race. Um, and we've got a cycling race. Describe the difference between their races. Which cyclist do you think finished first, Nada or Amy? So we can see here that Nada's speed is represented by the green line and Amy's by the orange line. What, what do you think happened in this race? Uh, pause the video, see what can you work out? What do you think happened? Who do you think came first? Okay, well, let's have a look. Um, so to start off with, we can see that Nada's speed was higher than Amy's uh, by this, for, for quite a long stretch here, uh, almost, maybe about a third of the race here, maybe even slightly more there. So Nada must have been a fair part ahead. And then her speed dipped considerably. Now, so did Amy's, but not as much as Nada's. Maybe they were having to climb a bit of a hill. And again here, then the speeds both increased. But again, Amy's for this whole stretch is going a little bit faster. Now, Nada finished the race going faster. But I think overall... I think Amy would have been would have been faster. I think she would have finished before Nada, because we can see here that this dip in speed is very significant. There are quite big differences here. So I think somewhere maybe here, Amy would have overtaken Nada and would have just finished ahead. Now here's recap number two. 
we've got a train timetable for the morning trains from Sheffield to Newcastle. So if you remember, this, for example, is the first train. It leaves Sheffield at 6.20. It stops at all the stations. It arrives at Newcastle at 8.14. And this is train number two and train number three and train number four and so on. So, for example, the fourth train arrives in York at 9.41. OK, so here's a question. Stan is travelling from Doncaster to Durham. He gets to Doncaster train station at 7.35 a.m. When will he arrive in Durham? Pause the video and have a go. OK, well, let's have a look. So he's travelling from Doncaster um, and if he gets there at 7.35, oh, it's so painful when this happens. He's missed this train by two minutes. So, Stan, you, you'll have to be on the 8.25. I've been in that position before, Stan, as well. Um, and then when will he arrive in Durham? Well, it will be at 9.39. Now, there's a question that you're going to have a go at. It's about um, getting someone to their job interview at the right time. I'm not going to stop and read it now. It's just under here. And have a think about the context of a job interview at an appropriate time to arrive. That's my little tip. Now, we're going to have a look at our first changing graph. So, in the autumn term, Darnford Primary School carried out a survey to find how many days per week children read at home. And this graph shows what they discovered. So this was the starting point and and it shows the children that read zero to two days it was uh, this many children and the children that read three to four days a week it was this many and five to six and and these children ra read every day. Then in the spring term Dar Darmford Primary School ran a love to read scheme with the aim of getting more children reading at home. Now at the end of the term they repeated the survey and this is what they discovered. This is what they found. So this was what um, the um, was happening with children's reading in the autumn term. Then after the project, this is has is what changed. Now your task is this: How successful was the love to read scheme? Have a look. What's the same? What's different about these results? And how successful do you think this scheme actually was? Pause the video and have a look. OK, well, what do we notice? What what what's what's different? Well, I guess we can see here that there are more children now who read uh, every day. Can you see that the number that the, the, there was what just over 40, maybe 40, 45 or so that read seven days a week. And now that's gone up to about 60 that read seven days a week. Um, and the number that read three or four times that has gone down a little bit from uh, from here. Um, and we've got the number of reading five and six times a week that has gone slightly down as well. But we have got this massive increase in the number of children that read seven days a week. But what we've got is we've still got around about the same number of children that read zero to two days per week. So I guess you could say the project was successful at getting some children who already read, reading more, reading for more days. But what it didn't do is take those children that don't read very much and get them reading a lot more. They can see there, I don't just have to take readings from graphs, but in this case, I have to really interpret them to think about what, what change has taken place. Now, we're going to have a think about making a story with graphs and before and after graphs. So here's two pie charts. OK, so there's a before pie chart with car, walk, bike and bus. And then there's an after pie chart with walk, bike, bus and car. So what could these two pie charts be showing? Think of a story. What? Why is there one for a before and why is there one for the after? Pause the video and have a think about that. OK, well, let's have a look and let's have a think about the change in these graphs. Well, it looks like the walk section is about as big. Um, and but the car section here was much bigger and the car section here much smaller, whereas the bike section here has increased a lot, and when, whereas it's quite small here. Now, let's say it could be, for example, some kind of a bike to work scheme. We want to get more people out of their cars and biking to work. And before the scheme, this was how many and how people got to work. And after this was the result. And, and what could we say? Well, it's been successful in increasing the number of people that now go by bike. About the same number go by bus and not as many go by car. But there's a story that will uh, that will support this. Now, one of your tasks that you're going to go and do independently is this one. And it's a similar idea. 
Um, Martin Vale Primary School ran an active start project. Now, I'm not going to read the, the, the whole task because it's for you to go and have a, have a look at. But again, what is the change in the graphs that we see? It was like this at first. It's like this afterwards. What conclusions can you draw? So let's see if you can combine the things that we've looked at um, previously on those other examples to come up with your own conclusion when you work on that task. So for today's tasks, click on the blue link underneath the video uh, and it'll bring open these options. So we've got an act the graph example there, um, a reading graphs type question, um, a changing graphs question where we're looking at a, the way that children travel to school in February and then what changes to May. Um, so we've had a look at examples like that in the video and then a planning the journey question, just like we've mentioned. The answers are at the bottom. So there's all kinds of different questions there to revisit all the different things that we've done uh, this week. And I'll be back next week and I'm really looking forward to it. See you then. So it's time to reveal the theme for the next fortnight. For the next fortnight, we're going to be learning all about capybaras. Hang on a minute. Someone's giving me the wrong picture. The theme for the next two weeks is reactions. Looking forward to it. I'll see you back on Monday.